Welcome back. Today, let's talk about four mistakes that I would try to avoid on a Weight Watchers journey. I've been doing Weight Watchers off and on since what, like 2008, but I didn't fully commit to the program and lose my 46 pounds until I started in July of 2020. So I've like been around the loop with Weight Watchers over the years. So I've really honed in on four mistakes that I think are essential to think about when you are on a Weight Watchers journey. Let's get into it. Number one, avoid the processed food, sugar-free, fat-free frenzy. When I started Weight Watchers again in 2020, you know, you do the normal things. You wanna research, you wanna read all of the blog posts, watch all the YouTube videos. I was watching a lot of grocery hauls and I felt like I had to go out and get all the food that people were showing because if they were having success on their journey, and this is all the food that they were getting, then I must get it too. So for example, one of the big rages were these Kellogg pastry little Pop-Tart things. When you scan it, it's super low in points. So I purchased them and they come in little packs. And I think it was four points and you get two of them. So sweet. They were good, but they would spike my blood sugar and then I would just be hangry and eating everything the rest of the day. So obviously not all foods are created equal. A lot of the food that was being shared were snacks, 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 snacks. And it's not like the person would come on the video and say, oh, eat hard boiled eggs. It could really help. It was like low point pretzel, low point cereal pouches, just all of these things that were carb heavy, more sugar, or using alternatives to sugar, which is fine, but I was just consuming all of it. And when I would look at my points, it would add up and I'd still be okay with my points, but then the bulk of my day was turning into these highly processed, sugar alternatives, sugar-free foods, and I just wasn't feeling that great. So my tip to you is watch all the videos, look at all the grocery hauls, and then really think like, would I typically bring this in my house? What is the nutritional value of this food I'm bringing in? Does it give me protein? What does the ingredient list look on, like on it? A lot of these new foods I brought into my house on when I started Weight Watchers, the ingredient lists were huge. So part of what's worked for me on my journey that made me start to feel better is when I started to clean up a little bit my processed food. Just because it's shown in a video doesn't mean it's the be all end all. And I think it's important to remember that it's very, it's much more glamorous to show in a video processed food. And I do it too because I make my reels and my YouTube videos and grocery hauls. Like I get it. It's not as glamorous to show like, and then here's broccoli or here's lean chicken or here's a hard boiled egg. Some of these videos capitalize on the fact that they want to show you new and exciting foods. But really for your Weight Watchers journey, my suggestion is keep your keep it simple. You know, lean into your zero point yogurt, lean into your lean ground chicken, lean into a ton of zero point vegetables, fruits. Like you don't need a ton of the processed stuff. Maybe pick like one item or two items to bring in and play with those. But other than that, I just don't think it's necessary. And it actually, a lot of those processed foods caused me to just eat more, even though they were low in points. Just because it's low in points and it's a processed food doesn't mean you have to get it. I actually have learned later on in my journey that I would rather some foods with higher points bigger bang for my buck of nutritional value and eat them in the day than eating a bunch of processed food that's lower point but is not giving me as many health benefits. Mistake number two is trying to do it all. What does trying to do it all mean? You know, within a Weight Watchers journey, there's tracking and it's tracking breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, desserts, Monday through the weekend. There's your activity. It's getting your activity steps up. There's your water content. There's getting sleep. There's just an array of going to workshops if you want to. Like there's a lot that Weight Watchers offers. It's fantastic. And for those of us that are perfectionist mindset, that's when we get in a perfectionist mindset and then we don't do things perfectly, and then it sends us into a shame spiral, and then we turn to food to cope. It's like this vicious cycle. 
So it's really important on a Weight Watchers journey to watch out for and observe when you're getting into that cycle of like trying to be perfect and then you're not perfect and then you dip into shame and then you dip into shame and you turn to food. So we want to like avoid that cycle which is why you just like, you can't do it all. I see some people trying to do the tracking, which in and of itself is a huge change and shift when you are not used to tracking what you eat and your inner rebeller and your mind is gonna wanna revolt because it doesn't wanna be held accountable and see what it's eating to go over points and then the shame spiral starts. So tracking in and of itself is a huge learning curve that should be handled delicately and with finesse and rolled out over time. But I see some people come in and they're trying to track perfectly. They're trying to meal prep perfectly where they're setting aside their day and they're prepping all their food and getting it all perfect in the fridge, trying the new recipes. Suddenly they go from like no activity um, to their, they're like trying to run a mile or five miles. It's just like, it's too much. Honestly, I've seen quite a few people in the Weight Watchers online space say they just started the first year or two of their journey just focused on food. And then they layered in activity. It's about the layered process when you're building these habits and the habits don't come naturally for you. You want to give yourself a high success rate. So you like do micro changes when you start to like build on your self-confidence instead of trying to do it all at once and then you just like fall off the bandwagon because you feel like a failure. You're not a failure. You're just trying to do it too fast. Our bodies kind of go into shock, both mentally, internally, because this is a big shift. So we have to work with our body and kind of go at a turtle space pace so that it knows like we're okay. We're not going to be starving. We're still going to eat good food. We're not going to overwhelm our system. We're going to roll this out little by little. So constantly be asking yourself in a Weight Watchers journey, am I tackling too much? You know, can I pull back in this area and really boost up this? If you're really weighing yourself a ton and it's impacting your mindset, like maybe pull back on the weighing yourself and focus more on the water intake. Like it's a push and a pull and a flow and a give and a take. Okay, third mistake in a Weight Watchers journey is not knowing about maintenance. I wish somebody had told me about maintenance when I started Weight Watchers for the gazillionth times. I thought maintenance was just for when you eventually get to your goal and then you just keep your weight the same. I had no clue that in order to protect your progress of your Weight Watchers journey, it can be very delicate. Life happens, stressors happen, seasons change. You know, life happens on life's terms that can throw us off course. And if we're thinking that we constantly have to be in weight loss mode, there's no way. For example, right now I'm trying to get to closer to my goal weight and I dropped into a new decade. And once I dropped into that new decade, I just, and got kind of comfortable in it, I just decided to maintain for a while so I could see even if I could keep at that number on the scale. So I kind of naturally went into maintenance and then when I'm ready, when I feel excited, then I'll go into the next push to like drop down again. But if our whole journey we're thinking is this gigantic push, this gigantic momentum, like the stress, like we have to get there and get there now, it's too much pressure. So I highly recommend throughout your journey, it could be that you decide over holidays to go into maintenance and you turn the maintenance on in your app and it gives you a few more points and it takes the pressure off. Or maybe it's you're going on a vacation and you decide to just go into maintenance and take the pressure off a little bit. Or you've been losing consistently for five months and you feel burned out a little bit and you take a month to just go into maintenance. For me, it was either I was on losing weight or I was off gaining weight. Where was the middle ground? Well, the middle ground is maintenance and you can use it as a tool to your advantage. Okay, my last tip, tip number four, and don't worry, I will come out with more of these videos, tip videos, mistakes to avoid videos, like all the things. This is just like a little sprinkle of some of my ideas for this. But the last fourth mistake to avoid making on a Weight Watchers or weight loss wellness journey 
is to try to do all the recipes. Like, yes, of course, you're going to be excited to get, you know, I used to want to get the cookbooks and I'd pick up all the cookbooks and then I, I am not somebody who loves cooking. I'm loving it more now, but um, cooking can be overwhelming when you've got a busy day. You know, if you don't plan for it and you're trying to put a recipe together after a long work day, keep it simple. For me, the best meal that helps with my weight loss journey is when I do a protein, like chicken, lean chicken, a vegetable, and a few potatoes. That is like my meal that for whatever reason I eat that, I feel so full after I eat it and the scale drops the next day. But if I'm out here trying to constantly make recipes and like try all the recipes, if it's fun, yeah, do it occasionally. That's what I'm trying to do. Like on Friday nights, I'll try a new recipe. But it can get very overwhelming to, to, to go and buy all the ingredients and cook. You don't have to change the way you cook or make your life harder to learn how to cook to be successful at a weight loss journey. I leaned on low point soup, like a vegetable soup that I just threw it all in, made a big batch. Um, lean on like tacos are easy, making taco meat, things that you don't even need a recipe for, right? The way that I would shift your thinking with this that really worked for me is that instead of really focusing on all the recipes and the cookbooks, I focus more on a system where I had a board with post-its and there was a section for seafood, Mexican food, Asian food, sandwiches. And under each of those sections, I would write general ideas, like for Mexican food night, tacos, fajitas, um, a rice bowl, um, for Asian food, like stir fry with chicken. I had an easy miso um, wonton thing that wasn't even a recipe, I just threw it together. So under each category, it might be like frozen stir fry mix from Trader Joe's and this. like. The plan is not really recipes, it's like general instructions for how to whip a meal together really, really fast. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Just a heads up, take me on the road, put me in your earphone. I will be your support system, your cheerleader, and just giving you lots of nuggets and things to chew on that will really motivate you on your wellness weight loss journey. This audio that I recorded is in my secret audio content hub for what I call my SJ BFFs because I'm Sheila Jane. So it's my Sheila Jane BFFs. So get into the secret group, get access to this audio and a ton more that you will love. I hope to see you in there.